Yo, what's up everybody? James Aspie, obviously. But what about this guy, man? Oh, no. Wayne Shung. No one cares about this guy. Founder of DXC. So in case you know what DXC is, what, why don't you explain it, brother? Direct Action Everywhere is a grassroots animal liberation network that started in 2013. Our goal is to power people up to become the best activists they can be. Absolutely. Make animal liberation happen in one generation. They do amazing, like bold, bold activism, brother. They get on the streets, they get inside. Um, Slaughterhouses and rescue, open rescue animals. They get into like a like a big restaurant or something, and they'll go in there and they'll do chants about how there's no humane way to kill someone who wants to live, kind of thing. What is it, humane? Well, we're inspired Don't, by great storytellers like you, James. Man, these guys go serious, hard really? for the animals. Hard for the animals. It's amazing work. Really inspirational stuff, and I highly recommend everyone support DXC and those who it resonates with that kind of activism get involved or start a chapter if there isn't one already near you because they are amazing Thanks. now yeah man it's the it's I respect it a lot now what we're gonna talk about today is something called the liberation pledge so brother please explain so the liberation pledge has three pieces to it and I've got this little band here to represent the liberation pledge and the three pieces to it are one to commit to go vegan publicly Put yourself on a website that says, I'm vegan, I'm going to be vegan for life, which I think everyone agrees with. Yeah. In the vegan and animal rights movement. The second part is the part that's most controversial, and that is that we commit to publicly stating that we will not sit at tables where animal bodies are present. We want to create animal free zones everywhere we walk. It's like creating a little zone of animal liberation. And I think this is often misconstrued as being something where we separate ourselves from non vegans. And what we really want to do is use this as a tool to encourage non vegans to join us at a vegan table. So I, I don't think if you ever have to take the Liberation Pledge in a way that prevents you from having a meal with a non-vegan, don't do it. Don't do it that way. Okay. Do it in a way that brings them to your table and helps them see the beauty, the power, and the justice of a vegan diet. And the third element of the Liberation Pledge, which honestly might be the most important one, even though most people don't know about it, is to ask other people to take the Liberation Pledge. So I'm here today to ask my buddy James to That's take the Liberation done. Pledge. That's what Wayne's done. Now, I've got different thoughts on the Liberation Pledge. First of all, I want to say I totally support the Liberation Pledge for anyone who that resonates with. Yep. Me personally, my belief is that, although that is definitely important and there's a place for that and I want as many people to do that who that resonates with, my suggestion to people is to eat at tables where animals are being eaten because if you're not at that table, then the, the conversation doesn't happen. Yeah. It's out of sight, it's out of yeah. mind. Yeah. They don't get to see your delicious vegan food. So if you do yeah. decide, even though sometimes it's hard, but if you do decide, I'm gonna eat at this table where people are eating animals, whatever, then that opportunity comes up where they can say, hey, what are you eating? Why are you yeah. eating that? I'm eating a delicious vegan meal. This is why yeah. I'm yeah. vegan. And the conversation happens. And my thing with the Liberation Pledge, although I think it's great and it is a bold statement to say, I, do, I will not eat at a table where animals are being eaten. I respect that. I don't yeah. think it's wrong. But I think also as well, that is right to do. And I also think it is right to be there and yeah. so you can be a vegan presence on those occasions yeah that makes a lot of sense yeah so i think both approaches are good and that's what i'm getting at so it's definitely yeah. not something i disagree with yeah and i think anyone who that resonates with do it um, because it's a it's a great statement to make and it will definitely influence people in a certain way yeah and then i also think though i hope that a lot of people as well will also be the vegans who do eat at those tables and be there to to be ready for those conversations to happen or to start them and things like that as well. What do yeah, you think? I think, I mean, it makes sense coming from you because I think, James, you're one of the best conversation starters in the world. Like some of the things you've done, you're one of your vows, silence, the speeches you've given, get people talking and we want people talking. I think the problem is for a lot of vegans, not all vegans, but a lot of vegans, when they eat with non-vegans, it's not a matter of having a genuine, thoughtful conversation about animal rights, but because someone is actually eating an animal body right in front of you, you feel silenced and repressed and like you sure, can't do anything. Sure. Like you're trapped in this environment where you don't support what's happening here. You don't have an opportunity to actually be authentic and be honest about how you feel about it. Instead, you feel trapped and suppressed. Sure. And so what we're trying to do is liberate people to actually have genuine conversations. So if not taking the liberation pledge is the best way for you to force yourself to have those conversations with non-vegans, then do it by all means. But for a lot of us, taking the liberation pledge has actually opened things up in ways that they weren't open before. I'll give you a trivial example. My dad is a vivisector. Whoa. He grew up testing know. on animals, eating animals. He killed animals with his own hands yeah. in China both in labs and chickens on the farm that he was raised in in Taiwan. And for many, many years, I was not able to have a meal with him when he was eating animals mm. about animal rights because he was yep. just so defensive and angry about it. And we, wow. just, we just shut down. Like, we sure. couldn't have that conversation. And so I started asking my dad, hey, dad, 
this is really important to me. So maybe you don't understand animal rights, but I've made a public commitment to my organization mm. and my people, my community, yeah. that I'm not going to eat at a table where animals are being eaten. So is it okay, as out of respect for me, that, that for us to have a conversation and a meal over vegan food? And yeah. he started doing this. That's amazing. And over the next two years, he started realizing, I like vegan food. We started having conversations where he didn't feel defensive about animal rights because he was not literally putting the body of an animal into his mouth. And they made him why it's wrong. And now my dad is not only one of the biggest supporters of DAC, but he's basically gone vegan. He's dropped me consumption entirely. And what we've seen over and over again is a lot of people, not everybody, yeah. but a lot of people, especially people who have some social and political power in their community, who take the liberation pledge, create a domino effect to the entire community. And one of our community members in the Bay Area took the liberation pledge as a high school student and transformed his entire high school to veganism. Because one by one, people started joining his table and deciding, you know what, I want to be on the table that stands for justice. Not because they think I'm a bad person or they're attacking me. Not because they don't want to talk to me, but because they actually believe me. They want me to come to this table. They want me to be a part of the vegan team. And as a result, the entire school Whoa. was vegan. So what? we've seen so many success. Yeah, that's amazing. The school. So that's this, amazing. there's so many success stories like this, and I'm not saying it's for everyone. You have to think about it very strategically. Yeah, sure. And definitely, James is right that you want conversations and non-vegans to happen because if we stay in our own little bubble, we're not going to change the world. Absolutely. To change the world, we need to start conversations. And James is great at that. Some of us aren't as great at that. And yeah. So sometimes we need to use tools like the Liberation Pledge to encourage 100%. those conversations. So and that, I agree right. with James completely. And I agree with take you. It if, take it if you can, but if you can't. Don't fret about it. Get to the point where you can take it or figure out other ways for you to have those tough conversations and not be No doubt, man. I couldn't couldn't agree more. Absolutely, bro. I'm glad we agree on that. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, I want to ask you another question, man. Sure. Um, so, what, so I've spent the last few, uh, couple of days with Wayne and seen how he interacts with people. We've done some slaughterhouse vigils together. And Wayne speaks to everyone at every single event and every single person that has a conversation with Wayne leaves I'm sure feeling oh my god I'm an amazing activist <laughs> he tells everyone they are we are all amazing right. activists he's right but he's very vocal about making sure people know that and uh, I just I just really respect that so much I think it's such an empowering yeah. way to speak to people and so as I as I mentioned it to you the other day whenever it was how good you are at that you, t you said that it's about radical acceptance. Inclusivity. Ra radical inclusivity. inclusivity. Yeah. Please, man, tell me everything you know about that. Radical inclusivity is a concept we borrowed from the gay rights movement, in particular a group that's incredibly successful in Los Angeles called the LA Leadership Lab. And their idea behind leadership is that leadership comes from all of us. It's not any one person. It's not a figurehead. We often have figureheads in movements. And James is a little bit of figurehead. I'm a little bit of figurehead. But James and I both believe that you have power. That Absolutely. key to growing this movement is you listening to this conversation. And so what they believe is that anytime someone walks into an animal rights space or a vegan space, or they believe in gay rights spaces because they're a gay rights group, but we have borrowed this concept. Anytime someone walks into one of our spaces, they have to feel welcome, they have to feel included, they have to feel like their voice matters, they have to feel like they have a friend in them because we've all walked into a room full of strangers and probably even an activist space where like we're the new kid and we don't feel included, we don't feel welcome, we feel awkward, we don't know who to talk to, yeah. and we feel like weak, and we don't want people feeling weak, we want people feeling strong, and the only way to make people feel strong is to include them and make them feel welcome. So at every one of our actions and protests in our community centers, we have a basic principle of radical inclusivity, where if you walk in, someone is gonna talk to you, they're not gonna force you to have a conversation, so if you don't wanna talk to them, they won't, but we wanna make sure you feel heard, you feel included, you feel like you have a friend in the room. Absolutely, man, and it's true, I've been at events where you know, that people say hi and whatever, but they don't really get included. It might be the first time they've ever done this specific type of action. They're probably nervous. They don't really know what's happened, what's happening. And we just say, hey, how you going? Yes, yeah, sweet, just, you know, stand over there, whatever. Man, I've done that a million times. And I've been actually really inspired by seeing Wayne in action, how much he really, he really makes an effort. He really takes the time to make everyone feel welcome, make sure everyone knows that they are an integral part of this group, yeah. and make sure everyone realizes that they are a powerful individual here to help and they're gonna make a difference. It's, yeah. it's been amazing to watch him do that. Yeah, I mean, okay. you just have to realize that 1% of the population is vegan, yeah. and 1% of vegans are activists. So we're talking about one out of 100,000 people are vegan activists, right? And it's amazing when you meet one of these people, if you meet someone who's one in 100,000, you should be like, cheering for them you should be Absolutely. clapping you should be saying dude you are amazing it's incredible you're so that you're rare. out here seriously yes. you're so rare you're like one in a hundred thousand right. people so every time i meet an activist but especially activists like you have committed your life to this cause it's like i'm just all inspired by people like james whenever i meet people like this or people like spencer who's doing video or people like antoine who's behind so this spencer, is what like, it does no man. i'm serious so like all these people are incredible so i am genuinely just stoked 
to meet every single vegan and animal rights activist I meet. Right on. And this is a thing in the vegan community. We're such a small community. It's such a, a good point. With, and we've got such an important job to do. And half the time, we're all fighting with each other about nothing important. And it's like, guys, just don't you get team. it? We're on the same team and you're fighting over nothing significant and in the meantime animals are suffering because of it like we are we are rare in this world man we are on the same team you know look for the good in each other respect each other even if you don't like someone respect them as an activist and that's what it's really all about yep so yeah like Absolutely. just just make that extra effort you don't have to love everybody you don't have to be friends with everybody but just keep that respect there for every vegan activist you know, who's not causing harm, everyone who's coming from the right place and trying their best to spread this message, man, respect that, respect that individual because when we are stronger as a collective and, you know, there's more mutual respect and yeah. people do feel more included, we're going to be so much better for the Absolutely. animals. Yeah. Absolutely, man. Right on. I totally. couldn't say it any better. Okay, well, all right. Now, what else, what else, man? Like, oh, I want you to tell us about, so something else with Wayne, man. You know, sometimes I'm like, yeah, man, I'm pretty good at this vegan thing. I know my stuff. And then I chill with Wayne and he starts talking about all this stuff, man. And I was like, oh my God, I need to start studying again. I just steal ideas from people smarter than me. Okay, I'm well, not that's actually very smart. Okay, so what are you, what are you I hear people like James and then I take their ideas. So, <laughs> so what are you talking about the other day? I'm serious. You were just telling us, what I found really interesting, what you were talking about the other day in the car, you were saying about, you were just talking about the history of movements and yeah. how, how changes are uh, created and things like that. So could you... Tell us, tell us. Yeah, and I think a lot of people think that the way we create change is we have to convince every single person in the world, one by one, to go vegan. Yeah. And I, I don't think that, I mean, that's part of it. Well, those one-on-one -on -one conversations are really important. But the way we really create change, if we look at the history of the movements, is by building a mass political mobilization, by building activists, not just vegans, people who are active, who yeah. are willing to vote, to fight, to protest, to do open rescues, to give incredible lectures, and go around the country and around the world dedicating their lives to animals the way James <laughs> Right? And so what social science has taught us is if you get about one out of a thousand people in a country fighting in a way that's beyond just passive support, but actually active nonviolent direct action. And I think there's a lot of misconceptions about direct action. Most people think direct action means being aggressive or actually running into a slaughterhouse. And those are definitely forms of direct action. But the most important form of direct action is just challenging injustice. Mm -hmm. And you can do that in so many different ways. A conversation can be direct action. A lecture can be direct action. And if we can get one out of a thousand people in any particular city, state, or one country, out of one out of a thousand is all we need. Doing direct action, challenging, not accommodating, not being patient with, not ignoring, but challenging injustice, then the world changes. And the reason this happens is you reach a tipping point where the entire society crescendos. It's like you create a domino effect and all the dominoes start to fall. And this is what happened in the civil rights movement. This is what happened in the gay rights movement. It's what's going to happen in the animal rights movement. Well, we need to find our voice. And the 10 words I always leave people with is find your voice, find your voice, make it strong and find that voice, what you believe in your heart of hearts. So find your voice. Then find some friends who also believe what you believe. Mm. And finally, fight like hell. Find your voice, find some friends and fight like hell. That is a recipe for social change. Beautiful, man. Thank you so much for sharing that, brother. Love Let's it. wrap it there. We'll leave it on those very wise words. I hope you enjoyed this interview. If you're Like I said, if you're not already aware of DXE's work, Direct Action Everywhere's work, then check out their vids, follow their Facebook page. It's it's amazing stuff. And Wayne, I just want to thank you, man. You, hey, it's my pleasure. You're an inspirational man. You've done amazing work. Thanks. You obviously know your stuff. So, yeah, I hope you all enjoy this interview. Thanks very much, brother.